Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. You kind of get upset with your parents because they allowed this to happen, and then you realize that uh, the people doing this are professional. They're professional thieves. A Lexington man wants to warn you about a scam his parents nearly fell victim to. The murder victims say they need your help as they try to raise money for three children she had custody of. The air continues to blow into the bluegrass state, and now I'm tracking the potential for a few snowflakes. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Good evening. As you just heard, you'll need to keep that winter coat very handy. This Arctic blast has settled in for what sounds like a long stay. And it is going to feel even colder as the week goes on. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, who is tracking a wintry forecast. Hi, Chris. Yeah, indeed, guys. At least we're not alone in this mess. Most of the country as of now into the deep freeze, all courtesy of the Arctic air that is straight out of the North Pole. Take a look at the map. It is actually colder to our west. It's minus 21 in Casper, Wyoming as of right now. All of a sudden, you don't feel too bad out there, do you? Temperatures into parts of central and eastern Kentucky ranging from the low to the mid-30s. We're colder in the north at 32 degrees in Covington as some even colder air is beginning now to push toward the south. Look at those wind chills into the northern parts of the area. Winds beginning to crank up a little bit. Feels like 26 Covington, 24 Louisville. Still a lot of low 30s into central Kentucky. Those numbers, though, will drop as the overnight wears on, we could see a few upper teens tomorrow morning. Noontime wind chill, only into the mid and upper 20s. We'll hang into the mid and upper 20s for a feel like number for most of your Thursday. That Thursday evening number will begin to really tank on us. Tomorrow evening, you're going to have to really bundle up if you're going to be outdoors. It's going to feel like it's into the mid teens and the low teens show up for a wind chill number on Friday morning. Life First Alert Defender has a clean sweep for now. A lot of clouds out there, and I am tracking a system in from northwest to southeast. That one is likely to bring a couple of snowflakes to the region. We'll start it out around 30. A few of those snow flurries will dance about the air into the heart of the afternoon with temperatures tomorrow basically holding about where we are right now. We'll talk about that and then watch the weekend forecast, guys, for the potential for a little more snow when I come back in about 10 minutes. Chris, we'll see you then. Thank you. We have an alert for homeowners tonight. A scam could target you. Alexa a man says his parents nearly lost thousands of dollars to a roofing business that promised work but never delivered. So we did some digging and found a man representing this business has been charged with theft before. WKYT's Jarek Insko is tracking the investigation in our top story at 11. He's always been close to his parents who are now in their 90s. So David Shannon is running the family business while looking after them on the side. They check in with us too, but we check in with them. On Saturday, when Shannon wasn't around, he says someone took advantage of his elderly parents. You kind of get upset with your parents because they allowed this to happen, and then you realize that uh, the people doing this are professional. They're professional thieves. A roofing scam to be exact. Shannon saying a man named Chris Lane promised to do a bunch of roofing work. He says the man worked for an hour. This is a three or four day process to be able to do what was done. Then wrote up this document with numbers that did not add up. The same people doing exactly the same process are still out there and uh, they're they're going to keep doing it because it's successful. So uh, right now, while it's active, uh, they need to be caught. And this case might not involve new scammers pushing police to open an investigation. Lexington police tell us a man who is associated with AC Roofing was previously charged in a theft case in connection to a similar scam earlier this year. There's no telling how many people have fallen victim to this scam. But luckily, Shannon was able to stop the check that his father wrote, saving him more than $2,500. But that hasn't stopped the problem, leaving his parents on edge. They almost have a fear of being at home, afraid somebody's going to come back. But Shannon just wants people to live cautiously and be alert. In Lexington, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. A good son there. Shannon says the men showed up on his parents' neighbor's doorstep the next day. Luckily, the Shannon family already alerted her about the roofers, so she did not fall for the scam. Tonight, friends of an eastern Kentucky murder victim are asking for your help. They are trying to raise money for the three children who were in her care. State police say someone shot Patricia Lutz Monday night outside a Lee County home. She had custody of the children, and friends say they're hoping to keep the children with family and out of foster care. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talks to Lutz's pastor, new at 11. She had a smile that could light the room up when she walked in. 
And I'll be honest, I'm going to miss her. I really am. Keepsakes and memories are all they have left. She would be the one that you would want to talk to because she could always cheer anyone up. But those who knew her say they'll always remember Patricia Lutz. As long as you have a mind, uh, Trish was one of those people that's, that you'll never forget. Now they're asking for help in memory of a woman they say was always helping others. She was like the Good Samaritan. When a lot of people would pass by, she just, uh, she saw something else in people. And uh, she saw hope, and she saw what they could be. Friends have now set up a bank account here at Farmers and Traders Bank in Campton. That money will go to help Lutz's kids that she leaves behind. I know that with her gone, the one thing that she would want would be her kids taken care of. And so that's why our focus is her kids. She was a wonderful mother. She was. Carol says the money will go to make sure the kids can stay with their grandmother as Lute's family and friends deal with a loss way too soon. Well, I'm trying really hard not to get emotional over it because um, she was such a wonderful friend. I will tell you that we will miss her and we love her, and, uh, uh, but we hope to go to heaven to be with her one day, more importantly. In Wolf County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. If you would like to donate, you can take or mail a check to Farmers and Traders Bank. We have all of that information about how to help at WKYT.com. Kentucky State Police have not made any arrests in connection with Lute's murder. Tonight, newly released 911 calls show the confusion and the fear from people outside a school following a double stabbing. He said the man is down. Yes, he's raising his head up now. I don't know what's happened. Hurry. Yesterday, Somerset police say that Marcos Popche stabbed his estranged girlfriend, Angie Rodriguez, in the parking lot of Meese Middle School. Popche then stabbed himself. The school's principal and assistant principal rushed to help and managed to kick the knife away from the man. Mr. Miller, we need him now, said. Well, the law's already on the way. Mr. Miller, 911 said the police is on their way. Pop J later died at UK Hospital. Rodriguez is still recovering there. We checked with her family today. They say she is improving. A road worker in Lexington lost part of his arm today in an accident. It happened this afternoon on Hagerman Court off of High Street. Lexington police say a worker with Stanley Pipeline was checking a piece of equipment that had stopped working, but the machine kicked back just as the man grabbed it, and police say his arm was cut off at the elbow. He was taken to UK Hospital. His condition is not known tonight. Co-workers say he was conscious at the time. Two people hit by cars in the same stretch of Lexington Road, and police say it's a sign of a bigger problem. Police say a man was hit and killed last night on North Broadway at Loudoun, and a woman was hit by a car just down the road about five hours later. We looked at police records and found since 2011, 39 people have been hit on Broadway while crossing the road. That's the most of any road in Lexington. But police say there's not a problem with the road itself. People say this is a dangerous intersection, but I don't agree with that. I think the way that people use this intersection is dangerous and is irresponsible in many cases. In just a few minutes' time today, our camera caught some people ignoring crosswalks or crossing when they were not supposed to be. The woman hit by the car last night is expected to recover. Kentucky will have a new lieutenant governor tomorrow afternoon. Current lieutenant governor Jerry Abramson announced last week that he's resigning to take a job in President Obama's administration. He'll officially step down at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. At that moment, former state auditor Crit Llewellyn will be sworn in as the new lieutenant governor in a private ceremony. She'll be publicly sworn in Friday afternoon at 2.30 in the state capitol rotunda. Heating repair companies tell us that they're working overtime now that, that Arctic air has moved into the bluegrass. But workers say some simple maintenance on your heating system can prevent some big problems down the road. They suggest being on a seasonal maintenance plan so someone can check your system each year. And they say a dirty filter can cost you a lot. Which will cause a furnace to overheat, cause it to turn off and lock out. Same thing with heat pumps. Um, it'll cause them to freeze up and for people not to have any heat. And that's just a basic that anybody can do. The heat experts also say that if you live in an older home, you should have the insulation checked to make sure you're getting the most out of your furnace.
A convicted murderer on Kentucky's death row will get the chance to argue that his sentence should be overturned. A jury convicted John Mills of the 1995 murder of Knox County gospel singer Arthur Phipps. Mills says his lawyers did not do a good job representing him, so he appealed his death sentence. Last month, the Kentucky Supreme Court ruled that Mills would receive a new penalty phase for his case. But the victim's daughter says the death sentence fits the crime. I think the death penalty is the best thing for this man. He has so much anger. Uh, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't want him out on the streets again, so I certainly hope he never gets out of prison. The prosecutors say that no matter what, Mills' murder conviction will not be changed, and he could still end up with the death penalty, even with a new penalty phase. Two men face charges after police say they used a trick to steal thousands of dollars in items from an outlet mall. Simpsonville police say on Saturday, Anthony Ruffin and Jerome Harkness stole more than $7,000 in shoes, electronics, and jackets from the outlet shops of the Bluegrass. They say the men had a specially lined duffel bag that blocked the alarm system from picking up on the security tags on the merchandise. But eventually, employees caught on and called police. One of the men was arrested in the parking lot, the other at a nearby restaurant. And he was on surveillance cameras mm -hmm. and stuff, and the mall has excellent cameras. I have to give it to them. They have some sharp cameras. Police also say two people tried to steal some Armani suits from the mall Monday, but they've not been caught, and police say the cases are not related. Tonight, we're tracking the investigation into a burglary in Knott County. State police say that someone broke into the Disabled American Veterans Building in Hyman earlier this week. The burglar stole a microwave and some other appliances. So far, police say they have not made any arrests. A new high-tech tool has arrived at Lexington's Cardinal Hill Rehabilitation Hospital to help patients. Cardinal Hill now has a robotic walker training system called the GEO. It will help patients with physical disabilities and traumatic injuries regain movement and strength. The GEO cost $287,000. Cardinal Hill spent years raising the money to buy it. Cardinal Hill has another machine with similar capabilities, but the GEO makes it easier to treat children. Pretty incredible. Tonight we're learning more about a space probe that landed on the surface of a comet today. The landing ended the European Space Agency's 10-year, 4-billion-mile journey to learn about what comets are made of. But the dishwasher-sized probe didn't have a perfect landing. Scientists think it might have bounced on the comet. It was traveling at 84,000 miles an hour. But they say they still have a clear signal from the probe, and they have received data from it. Mm, Fascinating. Pretty cool.